Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. Pretty cool thing today. It looks like the Behringer Wing Edit app has finally come out. I think a lot of us have thought that maybe it wouldn't at this point because it's been so long, but it's here. I'm gonna do a very, very quick first look at it. And more importantly, I'm gonna give you guys a resource that you can play with if you are considering getting a wing and want to kind of see what it looked like in the real world. Um, this is a uh, scene or well, snapshot, excuse me, um, that we set up for a church uh, pretty recently. So you can kind of see how it would uh, work and some of the goodies in there and maybe they'll spark you some good ideas. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So here we are looking at the app. Uh, this is on a Mac. Um, I like it. It's uh, It looks like the board. Things are where you'd expect them to be. This window up here is essentially um, what you would see on the screen. Uh, these buttons over here are the buttons that would be to the left of the screen. Uh, and then down here you have a bank of 16 faders, which is kind of interesting because on the wing itself, there's 12 faders on the left-hand side. Uh, but they decided to do 16 on here, which I like. Uh, and then also, kind of like how you can do on the wing, uh, you can customize these by hitting the edit button. You can add or subtract channels. So you can, I think you can do more than 16 at a time, which is kind of cool. Um, and then you can hit move if you want to rearrange them in some different orders after the fact. Um, and I imagine uh, this would be like some of the other editing apps where this will only affect what you're seeing on the screen. It won't actually affect um, what's happening on your console. So that's really cool and useful. Um, so a couple things on this scene that might be helpful for you. This is a church with a full band. So they have a drum kit and a cage with... Uh, all the mics on it, so OHDLR, that stands for overheads, drummers left and right, because some people do it from the house perspective, some people do it from the stage perspective. Um, I find it's easier to do it from the band's perspective um, so that the in-ears already have everything panned the way it is on stage, and then at front of house, you can see under main, I have inverted the left and right and brought the width in just a little bit, so that way online, the overheads will sound really nice and spacious, but in the room, if you're hit it sitting one way, all the way to the left or all the way to the right, you're gonna still hear a little bit of a more narrow um, stereo spectrum for those channels, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, so we've got overheads, kick, snare, top and bottom, um, toms, hats and ride. That's something that they wanted to do for the in-ears, but we didn't really end up needing a lot in the house. Um, Percussion one and two, so they had a percussion set with an overhead mic and then a uh, mic in front of like some congas. Um, bass one and two, bass one is an electric bass. Bass two is if they add a stand-up bass later on, which is kind of cool. A couple of electric guitars, a couple of acoustic guitars, next bank, a couple of keyboards. Um, they occasionally do a string quartet, but every week they have one violin. So we kept one violin on there and dialed that in. And, uh, and then we left some spaces for the quartet. They're running a six um, channel track rig. Uh, so it's a stereo tracks um, for most of it. And then they broke out percussion and bass because of some of the things that they do um, that works out well for them. And then very useful, they have click and cue separate, which is very helpful for band and vocals to get what they need out of the tracks. A uh, couple MD microphones, room microphone. Um, this is up, but the fader is not being sent to the front house mix. Um, so uh, it just allows me to get quick control over how loud that is in the live stream. Bunch of vocal mics. Next page. Uh, some speaking mics. Um, some playback devices. An oscillator for testing different speaker groups and in-ear mixes. Very, very handy little trick. And then what I wanted to show you on here was this. Um, I've got a previous video that I will put a link to so you can check it out where I talk about ways you can better use the effects section on the wing so that you're not eating up a bunch of buses. So I tend to use a band verb, vocal verb, and a delay. Um, 
rather than using a bus for this, I'm using uh, mains two, three, and four because I don't need those for anything else. Um, so they are post-fade sends. It just really makes a lot of sense. Um, but the return channels come in through here, so that's why you see B verb R. R is not for write. This is a stereo channel. Um, it's for return. So we got band verb return, vocal verb, ver vocal verb return, and delay return. And then in the mains, again, two, three, and four, band verb send, vocal verb send, delay send. Really cool, very useful, and that allows us to have a bunch of buses because you can see in this particular band, they're using 12 stereo buses for the band and the vocals. Um, they seem to be loving it so far. Uh, over here, this is kind of interesting. I kind of go back and forth when I do this. I, this is something that we did for our Ascension Collective touring group. Sometimes I do it for churches, sometimes I don't, but you can check it out. There's record one and then dub a bus. Um, let's talk about the dub a bus. So the dub a bus takes anything you send to it, it's a subgroup, and it inverts the um, left and right imagery. So practical example, let's say that you have a guitarist who is on the your left uh, side of the stage, so as an audience perspective, house left. Um, what I like to do is pan that musician hard left, send them to the dub a bus, and then the dub a bus just like you can see on here, it's again red, so it's inverted. So instead of being left and right, it's right and left. So if you pan that guitarist hard left, the double bus makes a copy, pans it hard right, and then we have a stereo effect on here that, I'm oh, sorry, a delay, stereo delay, that is just delaying everything, in this case, by 41 milliseconds. 25 also works, so I got another video I'll link where you can check that out a little bit more. Um, we drop out some of the highs, and then you can see the master volume for the double bus is down a few dB. So what ends up happening is it creates this false sense of stereo on the opposite side of wherever your musician is set. So again, if you have a guitarist on the left side, then this will put them on the right. If they're on the right, this will put them on the left. So even if you have two guitarists, at any time if one of them is playing, you'll hear them in both sides of the house and then the live stream is gonna sound really good. Um, and it'll, it'll help to fill that out, but the way we're pulling out some highs and overall volume and delaying things, all that combines together so that you still mostly hear the guitarists where they are on stage, um, but it creates this false sense of stereo just to thicken it up some more. It's really cool. But because of that, that's why we have Rick One, Record One. It has everything but what the Dubba Bus is doing um, because then Rec One and uh, Dubba Bus combined together into Matrix 8, which is called Rec 2. This is what would be going out over a live stream or recording. Um, it has the stereo spread happening, it has all the channels, um, and then it has uh, a brick wall limiter in there to boost up the volume a bit. Um, so that's it. So that's our, how our system works on here. Um, I just want to put this out there so you can check it out and get some ideas. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section on YouTube, and uh, I'd love to answer those for you. On that note, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us out in the YouTube algorithm and then also allows you to know when new materials are coming out. Um, so yeah, I hope this is helpful for somebody out there. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.